Hi everyone. In this first video, I'm gonna go over short tandem repeats and then also talk a little bit about the assignment um, in the DNA analysis packet that I have for you guys today. So first of all, just a short review. Short tandem repeats are short sequences of DNA, about two to five base pairs long, that are repeated a various number of times at a single location. So looking at this image here, if we are looking at the top example, each one of those little yellow blocks would represent that short tandem repeat. So let's say, for example, the sequence here is GATA. In this first example, for allele 1, that repeat exists four times. And in allele 2, that same repeat, the GATA, exists seven times. Remember that alleles just refer to different versions of a gene. And in this case, when we're talking about this gene, it's really a piece of non-coding DNA. So there isn't a phenotype associated with it. But what we're gonna record from um, the number of repeats is just this number here. So for example, the genotype for allele one would be four, and the genotype for allele two would be seven. And we can distinguish between these alleles by running these samples on a gel. Remember that on gel electrophoresis, the smaller the fragment is, the faster it's going to run. So it's going to end up closer to the bottom of the gel. So right here we see that allele 1 ended up kind of towards the bottom next to the allelic ladder or kind of our standard for the number 4. And then allele number 2 that had 7 repeats that would make it a little bit longer ended up closer to the top of the gel here next to the allelic ladder or the standard for 7 repeats. What I also want you to consider is that individuals always contain two alleles for a gene, or they have, they have two copies of that particular gene. So some individuals here might have one copy of allele one and one copy of allele two, and so if you run, ran their DNA, it would look just like this gel does here. However, other individuals might be homozygous, meaning that they have the same version on both copies of that gene. So one individual might have two copies of allele 1, so they have four repeats on each of their chromosomes. And so what you would see in a gel electrophoresis like this would be only the presence of a band down here. And that band would be a little bit darker because there would be double the amount of DNA that formed that band. Likewise, if somebody was heterozygous, sorry, homozygous for allele 2, meaning that they had seven copies of that repeat, they would only have a band up here at seven. Now, the second thing that I just want to introduce here is um, something called capillary electrophoresis. So back in this example, we looked at gel electrophoresis. We became kind of familiar with this technique last week when I showed you the examples of the gel boxes. But in a forensic laboratory, they use much more sophisticated equipment to actually visualize the DNA samples. And what they use is something called capillary electrophoresis, which I'll cover in a little bit more detail in another video. But I just want to give you a sense of what this would look like versus a gel that we've already become familiar with last week. So instead of running vertically, capillary electrophoresis, at least the diagrams we're going to look at, run horizontally. And what it's going to show are the shorter fragments towards the left and the longer fragments towards the right. So in this example right here, where it says donor, it tells us that there are four repeats for allele one and eight repeats on allele two. So what we see here, these peaks are representing the DNA of each of those different alleles. So here we see the peak for a, a genotype of four for this particular region. And here we see a peak for a genotype of eight. Likewise, down at the bottom where it says recipient, I'm not really sure what donor and recipient mean here, but the six is represented by this blue peak and the 10 is represented by the pink peak here. So the same idea as gel electrophoresis, it's just represented in a slightly different way. So going back to your packet, your first assignment for our online lesson is to read through the top of page 14 
about STR analysis. I give you a little example here about what the DNA profile would look like for each of these examples. And then we're going to start analyzing some information about a family called the Blackett family. Now, if you are in AP biology, you might have seen this background and it's the same activity. But essentially, you have this one individual, Bob Blackett, who is interested in constructing a family tree and identifying DNA profiles for both himself and his relatives. So to do that, the first thing I'm going to ask you to do is to construct a pedigree. Basically, a pedigree is a diagram that shows family relationships. It really just looks kind of like a family tree. If you need a refresher on pedigrees, if you don't remember them from biology last year, I've um, included a link to a tutorial on pedigrees that'll help walk you through how to create that. But essentially, you want to start with Bob and his wife, Anne. So you'll, you'll um, use different symbols for males versus females. You're going to connect uh, a husband and wife with a horizontal line. You'll connect children with a vertical line. Again, this tutorial video here will help walk you through that. So your assignment today is just to read through um, page 14 and create the pedigree um, for the background of the Blackett family. Tomorrow I will upload some additional videos referring to capillary electrophoresis and how to interpret electropherograms and ask you to answer questions two and three on page 15. Let me know if you have any questions.